Hi, everyone. My name is Ian Wolf, and I'm the coordinator of student conduct and student information at Burn Community College. I'm joined today by the manager of environmental health and safety, also at Bergen Community College, Mr. Ryan Brown. Today, we're going to be talking about Earth Day's digital teaching because today, Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020, is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and we are going to be celebrating, however, in a digital media for, medium for this year. So, first, I want to talk a little bit about the history of Earth Day. It started in 1970, so this year coincides with our 50th anniversary of Earth Day. It was really started by the increase in the number of cars on the road and air pollution that was resulting from a lot of cars with the um, fossil fuels going into the environment and stuff like that towards the end of the 1960s and beginning of 1970s. The law to make Earth Day a federal holiday was pioneered by Wisconsin Senator Gaylord Nelson. And this really uh, came from student action. When I mean student action, I'm talking about student protests in the late 1960s on college campuses throughout the United States of America, where students really decided, hey, we can sort of stick up for ourselves and ensure that our planet is safe and sustainable for years to come and generations after us. And if we don't do something here now, it's only going to be worse and worse for students and young people who follow after us. They selected April 22nd for Earth Day because this was, was strategically um, timed between spring breaks and when finals started on college campuses throughout the United States. Flash forward 20 years after 1970, in 1990, the United Nations um, takes Earth Day global and makes it an international holiday. And students can learn more about Earth Day at earthday.org. This webpage that I've linked on the PowerPoint is for specifically about the history of Earth Day. Now that we have a solid background about what Earth Day was, is, and what we hope it to be into the future, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Brown. He's going to talk about some of the ways that we can have a sustainable Earth on campus, in, whether in Paramus, Lindhurst, or Hackensack. Ian. And hello, everyone. First and foremost, hope everyone is safe, and I wish you the best in everything in these difficult times. But today, I want to celebrate Earth Day, April 22nd, 2020, and how this impacts Bergen Community College. Uh, we have a stormwater permit um, by the state, New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, requires this permit, which basically says that we have to reduce pollution and try to mitigate as much as possible when we have water going to our drains, which eventually goes to our streams. The purpose of the compliance issue by NJDEP in the hopes to mandate management and to do our part to eliminate any type of pollution or any type of waste in general to our environment. This greatly helps because without these type of regulations, would only be up to each individual entity, school, or business to do it. So this is a way they can track and make sure that we're doing our part. And we are doing a really good job at Bergen Community College. We have our grease traps that helps when we have uh, treating our, I guess, our waste when it comes to bacteria and our drains when we have for our cafeterias. That's a way they can help reduce any type of bacteria going into our sewer system, eventually can go affect our storm with a drain system. So we have different things we do on campus to help in preventing this. The way number one you can do this as I spoke to Ian earlier is simple that two things we can do at Bergen Community College, either at the main campus at Paramus and Hackensack, or if you're in the Meadowlands or anywhere in general in your own town, is reducing your pollution. If you have some type of waste, use the use the use a dumpster, use a trash can, don't throw it on the street, don't throw it on the sidewalk. You know, if you're going to, you know, uh, feed wild animals, please don't do that. That's one of the requirements for our stormwater permit is we must not feed any wild animals. Those are two simple things you can do that we don't really think about that can actually help the environment. And the last thing is I wanted to talk about something we have as innovation at the campus, uh, the main campus of Paramus. We have a, a device called the ball beater. This is a device that crushes the uh, bulbs that are used up. Instead of just regularly putting them to the trash or getting the company to take them out, we actually have a system on campus where it actually 
destroys the balls. It breaks them up into like a powder form and it's inside a drum. And that can basically destroy almost 2,000, 3,000 bulbs before it gets filled up. This greatly helps the environment. Instead of having those bulbs being transported, or it can actually be damaged or cause the issues. It actually helps itself by saving the school money and, and, and disposing of it. We can actually help reducing our waste. Next slide. I'm so, okay, and then the next slide. This is something that was a was a really great, you know, idea. I'm sorry about how this year went, 2020, but I'm hoping next year, 2021, we can actually plant some trees. This is all spearheaded from Dr. Fisher, and the Horticulture Department who donated the trees, you know, for for us at BCC, and I worked with the DPW of Hackensack to allow us to plant trees in a park called Sky Park in Hackensack, New Jersey. The whole point of this was to go to a park. With a group of either faculty and staff and students, you know, um, pick an area of the, of the park, plant some seeds, you know, try to uh, you know, grow life itself. You know, what better way to help the environment and to actually grow trees that helps with us in creating oxygen for us. <laughs> so that was a way I wanted to do. And hopefully next year, you know, everything will change for the better and we'll have it back to normal and we can do this next year, which would be great for the environment. Thank you, Ryan. And taking it back more towards initiatives that are going on on campus actively this year is there is a Brief Clear Campus Task Force and there will be a club, the Brief Clear Campus Club moving forward. So the purpose behind these organizations is to make sure that the campus is a 100% smoke-free and tobacco-free campus. Right now we have a task force which was um, tasked with putting together a policy to take Bergen to be 100% tobacco and smoke free by May 2020. And actually, while we were recording this here today, I received notification from Dr. Ross that for May 2020's Board of Trustees meeting, that a policy will be updated. So students, faculty, and staff should be on the lookout for more of that as we enter summer 2020 and look to come back to school either in later summer or fall of 2020. The tobacco and smoke free initiative really values respect community and responsibility, which are values of the community college where all students are expected to show respect to one another to their community, whether that's an abstract thought of what their community is or uh, physically um, the location on campus. And it's your responsibility to live up to these values, because if you're not doing it, other students and other faculty and other staff might think that they also don't have to live up to the rules put forth by the college. So um, that's something to look forward to. You'll see our pictures here on the right side of the screen, our, our Brief Clear Campus logo. And below it, unfortunately, some of our wildlife out there um, in the form of two uh, birds sharing a cigarette butt that somehow it looks like ended up on the beach, um, potentially somewhere here in a Jersey beach. So do your part and make sure when you um, are being outside, you know, that you're not making the environment worse off than the way you found it when you entered the environment. The last thing in wrapping up um, our Earth Day digital teaching is the Beautiful Earth Project, which is a social media challenge. And I just wanna go over this because it's something that'll be live starting um, on Earth Day. Students can take a picture or video that is symbolic of our beautiful planet. Use your imagination, think outside of the box, Think what is beautiful to you and try to capture that using either video or pictures on your phone. Be sure to follow safety guidelines outside, uh, outside as outlined by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, so the CDC. Um, obviously, wear masks, wear gloves, do whatever you need to do to ensure that you're being safe during uh, the COVID-19 outbreak. Okay, and again, this is a challenge by choice, meaning that you don't have to do it if you don't feel um, like you are being safe by going outside. Um, students can submit their content to the Instagram for Bergen Student Life and Conduct, which is Bergen SLC, as a direct message by 5 p.m. today on Earth Day. A team of professionals, Mr. Brown and myself, along with two other members from the Office of Student Life and Conduct, are going to review all submissions and select a winner. And that winner will receive a $25 uh, Visa prepaid gift card funded by the Brief Clear Campus Initiative, where we're gonna give that gift card out when we return to campus, because unfortunately, 
that is a piece of plastic that is in my desk on campus in Paramus. And the winner is going to be announced on Instagram on Thursday, April 23rd, where we will either share your video or picture based upon the submission that is the winner for this year. So on behalf of Mr. Brown and myself, I hope that you were able to take some important information from this presentation. And, you know, no matter when you do get to go outside and when we do get to all reconvene together and have some social non distancing, always remember that the earth is a beautiful place and you need to do your part to make sure that it remains as beautiful for generations and uh, people to come after us. And without further ado, Ian Wolf and Ryan Brown, we are signing off.